CapCut is the best editing program for beginners in 2024. And in today's video, you're gonna get a step-by-step -step tutorial covering all of the important aspects so you can create amazing content for your social media, your YouTube channels, and maybe even commercials for your brand. Let's dive in. All right, so to set the stage for this video, we're gonna do a full walkthrough of how I edited this video that you're seeing right now. I posted it on social media to basically promote this YouTube video. And even though that's a reel that you're seeing right now, what we talk about will completely translate over to YouTube and really any other form of content. To start, we're gonna quickly cover the layout of CapCut so you know where all the important features are. Then we're gonna dive into what I'm calling just a level one basic edit. If you're completely new to CapCut, this section will be perfect. It will get you up to speed creating professional content that you feel proud to post online. And then finally, we're gonna kick things up a knot and do a really advanced edit of the same video, showing you exactly how to replicate a lot of those cool trends that you're seeing the pro editors do online. And that's it. So let's dive into CapCut here on my computer. And to start, we're just gonna come up to the top and select new project. So CapCut is made up of these different windows in the editing program. A lot of them have multiple tabs, which we'll dive into throughout this video. But to start, we need to talk about this media tab up here. This is where we import our footage. So we can click on the plus button or hit command or control I, and then navigate to our computer where the video we want to edit is stored. Okay, so I found the clip, selected it, and now you can see it is here in the media pool. So when you click on that video in your media pool, it will start to play and you can get an idea of what it looks like. But this brings us to the second most important tab in my eyes, which is the timeline down here. This is where we actually assemble the footage to create our final video. All you need to do is take the clip that you want to edit, drag it down here onto the timeline, and now you can see in a left to right fashion we have the video that we're gonna be editing today. Now some basic controls with the timeline here. If you ever wanna zoom in or zoom out on the timeline, you can come over here and drag this bar, which will allow you to make fine tune adjustments to your videos. You can also hit command plus or minus on your keyboard. Most of the time though, what I do is I will hold the command key on my keyboard and then use the scroll wheel on my trackpad or on a mouse if I'm using one which will let me zoom in and out. If you wanna make an adjustment to your clip, like trim the beginning or the end, you can come over, just drag that and trim it, and the same thing with the front and the back. If you wanted to cut a clip and maybe delete a section, you can come up to this tool right here, which is split, or you can hit Command B, which is the keyboard shortcut. You can see that's now split the clip into two different sections where I could maybe delete one. You can hit Command Z to go back and undo anything you might have done. And for the time being, that's really all you need to know. As we continue editing the video, more features will become apparent. Now, you'll notice when you actually select the clip on your timeline, in the top right corner of CapCut, we have this tab pop up, which is the video tab. With this tab, we can make a lot of changes to our video, like we could increase the scale, we could mess with the rotation if we wanted to. Lots of things that would become more relevant as we continue editing, but we have other functions. We can control our audio here and maybe increase or decrease the volume. We can make our clips faster or slower in the speed tab. In the animation tab, we have some built-in animations within CapCut, all very self-explanatory that we'll dive more into as time goes on. Now, if we deselect a clip on our timeline, so basically click anywhere so that the clip is not highlighted, you'll see this window changes into our project panel where we can see some of the important settings of the entire project that we're editing. For the most part, you can leave all this stuff as is. The only thing I will change for right now is the name of my project. I will hit modify and we'll just call this best free editing software, and then hit save. Moving across our screen here in the player window, it's self-explanatory, this is where our video is gonna play back. There isn't too much to talk about here, but I will say if your computer is struggling to play the videos back and it's lagging a little bit, you can come up here and then change the preview quality to performance priority. If you wanted to change the aspect ratio of your video from vertical for maybe Instagram or TikTok to widescreen for YouTube, you could come down here and select a ratio and change it to, let's say 16 by nine. And of course, with this clip, we have the black bars on the left and right. We just have to zoom in and make it fill up the frame. For the time being though, we want to stay in a vertical format. So we'll just go back to the original. And then I know we already touched on this top left corner, but I do wanna point out there is a lot more functionality built in here. We have the media pool, which is where everything we've imported will live, but we also have a tab for audio and music, text, stickers, 
effects and transitions and a lot of other things that we will use throughout this editing tutorial. Okay, so that does it for the basic overview of CapCut. I think it's a lot more valuable to see these things in use. So that's what we're gonna dive into right now with the level one edit. Now, there are obviously tons of different types of videos that you could create. Right now, we're focusing on a popular style, which is just a talking head reel, which will also mirror a YouTube video. One thing about this video, we have one main talking head clip. So the primary video exists in just one clip. Let's say on the other hand, you were doing a travel video and you had multiple clips that you wanted to piece together. The only difference here is your media pool would be filled with other clips and you would take those clips and you would again drag them onto the timeline. You could grab the clips, rearrange them. You could take the clips, trim them to shorten them down and only highlight the sections that you want. And that's honestly how you create a very basic video. But we're gonna go back because we only have one clip here. And now the first step in my editing workflow is to make sure our clip is framed up properly. We'll do any minor color correction if that needs to happen. And we'll also edit our audio to make sure it sounds good. Now with the clip that we're looking at right now, I think the framing is all set. So I don't need to change anything there. If I wanted to, I could zoom in and just use my mouse to like reframe and position the subject wherever I wanted it to. We're not gonna do that for now. And then as far as color correction and audio is concerned, same as before, I'm pretty happy with how it sounds and how it looks. But just to show you, if we came up to the audio tab, we could bring the volume down or up depending on how it already sounds. We could do a loudness normalization, which will basically auto adjust the volume to sound very stable throughout the entire clip. And then outside of a few pro features, which we're not gonna talk about in this video, we could also just do a basic noise reduction, which can remove some noise from the background. Now I'm already happy with my audio, so we will skip this. The only other thing we do here is adjust the color. So we'll come over here, click on the adjustment. And again, I'm happy with how this looks, but let's say I wanted to you know, bring the color temperature down. We could do that here. I'm gonna hit Command Z though, cause we don't need to do that. We could boost the saturation slightly, get those colors to pop. We could adjust the brightness, maybe turn down the brightness just a hair on this. And overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Color correction is an entire topic all by itself. I'd recommend just trying to shoot things as nicely as you can straight out of the camera. So intro steps out of the way, let's now actually edit this footage to make it watchable. And you can see the way that I film is I usually bullet point things out and I will say one line, I'll take a pause, I'll relook at my script or my bullet points and I'll continue going. What's the best free editing software for beginners in 2024? So here I am looking at the script. For the past 10 years, my go-to editing program has been Premiere Pro. It looks kind of funny to see it this way, but it is a really easy way to just get videos out there without having to memorize an entire script. But with that, if we zoom in on the timeline, you can see looking at the audio waveforms, right? These little lines represent the volume of my voice talking. We have all these spaces in here that are completely blank and I need to remove those from the video. Now CapCut has some really easy, quick shortcuts that we can use to do this. The first one is split. So we'll go to the part in the video where I'm done talking. And now we can come up here and hit the split button, but I like to use my keyboard shortcut. So I'll hit command B. And then we'll go forward to when I start talking again, right around here, you can see the volume levels bumping. And then I'm gonna use the next feature here, which is delete left. So what this does is it will delete everything from the playhead all the way to the previous cut on the left side. So you'll see when I click this button, it's just deleted that space. And now one talking portion goes directly into the next talking portion. And again, just because I recommend everybody use keyboard shortcuts, if I were to do that even faster, I would come here, hit Command B, and then I would go forward to the next talking point and I would hit Q on my keyboard, which is the keyboard shortcut for delete left. You can see that right here. When I hit Q, tightens that space up and now I'll just go through the entire video and remove these pauses. It usually only takes a minute or so. Okay, now we're at the end of the video. I've removed all the dead space and we'll see here, looking at the audio levels, that we stop talking and then there's this portion at the end before I hit the record button. Obviously, I could just take the end of my clip and trim it down, but in the reverse of delete left, we have another shortcut, which is delete right, or W on the keyboard. And if I hit that, it will just delete everything to the right of where the playhead is. And I use that all the time as well. So here we have our video that is now fully cut up. Now the next thing that I'll do in basically all my social media and YouTube content is every other clip where we have this jump cut from one clip to another, I will take the second clip 
and I'll just zoom in slightly to give the impression that the camera is kind of punching in on us. This is something you'll see a lot of editors do, and it just helps with the pacing of the video. So all I'm doing is coming in here, selecting the edges of these clips, moving myself down slightly to make sure that the eyes line up clip to clip. So we've done that throughout the whole video, and if I just quickly scroll the playhead through, you can see it punches out, punches in, punches out. It might feel weird when you first start doing this, but trust me, almost every editor does this nowadays. Now, believe it or not, we only have three more steps with this basic edit before we're ready to export and post online. And our next step is a crucial one, and that is to add B-roll to our video. Think of B-roll like the additional clips that we add on top of our A-roll, which is the talking portion that we've got here. And these B-roll clips add context for the viewer. It makes sure that what the viewer is actually seeing is kind of constantly changing in dynamic so that they don't get bored. And overall, it just makes our video look more professional. So in preparing for this, I actually filmed a handful of B-roll shots and I organized them into a folder on my computer. So we'll come up to our media pool here. I'm just gonna hit the import button, go to my desktop, and then select this folder and hit import. Now you can see here that actually imported the entire folder, which I usually like to do to stay organized. And now I can click into this folder and here are all of the B-roll clips. Now adding B-roll is a relatively simple process. We would just come down, navigate to whichever B-roll clip we actually want to use. And then we could simply take that clip and then drag it over onto a new layer. And the way video editing programs work is basically each layer on top will get priority and that will get shown. So if you see here, when I bring the playhead over, as soon as that B-roll clip takes over on the timeline, that is now being shown and will be shown until it ends, at which point it will go back to the layer underneath, which is our main A-roll layer. Now just taking that clip, dragging and dropping it, it's not a bad approach, but with a clip that's this long, we're always gonna have a big chunk at the beginning where I hit record, go sit down and do whatever I'm doing. There's a lot of empty space, so I'm actually gonna hit Command Z, remove that clip, and we're gonna take a better approach, which is setting an in point and an out point on the B-roll clip, and then just dragging that specific section onto the timeline. So here we have this B-roll clip, and I know I only want to bring in the section that starts right here. So what I'm gonna do is drag this left side over to where I want the B-roll clip to start. So that's what we call the in point. That's where this selection starts. And then we'll take the out point to the end of where I want the B-roll clip to be. So now we have a much smaller selection, and if we pull this down, you can see it's a much more specific pre-selected clip. Now I know I want this B-roll clip to start at the portion in the script where I say, for beginners in 2024. So we'll play that through. What's the best free editing software for? So that's right where I start to say for. We'll just grab this B-roll clip and align it right with the playhead. So we'll play that through now. It's free editing software for beginners in 2024. And then I want it to end at the end of this clip. This is a new section, so we'll take this clip drag it and trim it down to where it is at the same exact point. Now I like the way this B-roll clip looks, but we can make things even more professional. I don't like how much of the ceiling is showing here, so I'm actually gonna take this and zoom in and just drag the clip around to reframe it and have it be more focused. No pun intended with the light there on the wall. Anyways, we're also going to color correct this clip and bring up the exposure just a little bit. I think this is kind of dark. So with this clip selected, we're gonna come up to this right panel here. And now I don't see the adjustment tab, so I'm gonna click on this arrow, hit adjustment, and now we'll scroll down to where it says brightness. We can bring up the brightness a little bit, and I'll also bring up the shadows. I think that looks a lot better than how it looked before. And if you wanna preview what it looks like on and off, you could just come up to the adjustment check right here. That's before, this is after. I think that's a lot better. Now, if you're editing a video and you're like, oh, Anthony, I don't have any B-roll, this is obviously where you could find stock footage online to use as B-roll. I always think having personalized B-roll is a better option, but it's not possible for everyone. And if you're looking for a recommendation on my favorite free stock video site, that would be pexels.com, which I'll have linked below. Okay, let's add a little more B-roll here. For the past 10 years, my go-to editing program has been Premiere Pro. I love this. So right here, I want to add a B-roll clip for Premiere Pro. So I have this clip that is actually a widescreen clip, but it does showcase me using Premiere Pro. So we'll set the endpoint to where I want the clip to start, set the endpoint, then drag that onto the timeline. Now again, I know I want this clip to end at the same time as the underlying A-roll, so we've aligned that. Now obviously that doesn't look good. Uh, it's a widescreen clip in a vertical timeline. So all I need to do, I can grab the edges here and zoom it in, but I can also, with the clip selected, 
go up to the video tab, make sure we're on the basic sub tab, and then bring up the scale. That's filling the frame, and then we'll just drag the clip a little over to the left, that way the computer is fully in view as well. What's the best free editing software for beginners in 2024? For the past 10 years, my go-to editing program has been Premiere Pro. I Okay, so you see the process, we're going through basically step-by-step step in the video, finding areas where we know we can add more value visually, and then dragging B-roll onto the timeline to deliver on that value. Just because the process is repetitive, I'm gonna go throughout the entire video and add my B-roll in now, and then we'll resume in a minute. All right, so you can see here, we've added some more B-roll, not a crazy amount because again, this is just a level one edit, but I'm pretty happy with it. Now, the next step after adding our B-roll would be to see if we can add any transitions or effects to again, make the video look better. Now, I don't like using a transition every single time I use a B-roll clip. I think that's a common beginner mistake, but I do like doing it sometimes and I'll show you one of my favorite transitions right here. So when we transition from this clip into this clip, I wanna use the glare transition. Now to find that transition, we'll come up to the top left, select transitions, and you can just type in glare. So we can get a preview of what that transition looks like by hovering our mouse over it. Now to use this, the way transitions work is you put them in between two clips that are butted up against each other. Now if I try to drag this transition onto the beginning of this clip, it's gonna tell me there are no continuous clips, basically meaning that clip is on a layer all by itself, there's nothing to the left of it. So what I need to do here is actually take this bottom A-roll clip, go to where this next clip starts, and we're gonna put a split point right here. I'm gonna do this by hovering up to this button. Now we've selected this clip, this new split clip, and I can drag this one layer up to put these clips next to each other. Now something happens here, which can really throw off your edit. If you see, as soon as I dragged that clip up, all the other clips on the timeline basically moved to the left to fill up that gap. If I hit Command Z and do it again, you'll see as soon as I drag that clip up, everything else moves. Now we can turn this off and all we need to do is come up here where it says turn off main track magnet and select that option. Now, when I bring this up, that space is gonna stay empty and it doesn't mess with the timing of our video. Now I can come up to our glare two transition, bring it down and place it between these two clips. And now check out how this looks. What's the best free editing software for beginners in 2024? For the past, that's a very popular transition that a lot of people use right now. Now I also wanna add another transition at the end of this B-roll clip. So we're gonna to have to take this A-roll clip, bring it up a layer. In order to do that, we can just very simply come here, create a cut point, and then drag just this section up. Now, the next transition I wanna use is another fan favorite, and it is the pull in transition. So we'll search for that. And the preview of this is basically showing just a simple smooth zoom in. So we'll grab that, drag it between our clips right here, and now you can get an idea of how that looks. What's the best free editing software for beginners in 2024? For the past 10, so it's just a very clean and smooth zoom in transition. So from here, I'll just go throughout my entire video and add any more transitions that I think will enhance the video. So here we have another B-roll sequence that'll play through for you are over. CapCut is an extremely powerful free editing software that works on both your phone and your computer. So nothing crazy going on here, just four clips playing one after another, but I wanna add a transition going from this clip to this clip. And because if you look at the motion of this clip, and I'll mute the track so we can play through it. It's basically pulling out ever so slightly. So rather than using the pull in transition, which zooms in, we'll do the opposite. And I've already searched for it here, but it's the pull out transition. It's the opposite, so we'll drag that on. You can see this kind of like naturally falls in motion with the movement of the clip. See, we've got that nice subtle zoom out, which I think looks really good. And now to end this little B-roll sequence here, we're actually just gonna use that glare transition again. So I'll come up to glare, drag it between these two clips, and now we can play through it. Are over. CapCut is an extremely powerful free editing software that works on both your phone and your computer. It has built-in features for auto. Pretty cool. So you can see from our timeline, our video is getting a little more advanced. The last step that we'll do now before exporting is adding auto captions to the video. CapCut has a really nice intuitive auto caption feature. We just gotta come up to the top left panel, select text, 
And then you'll see the first option is auto caption. So we'll choose our language, which is English. We can leave everything else as is and I'll hit create. So now if I mute this and play through, you can see that we now have auto captions showing in the video. They're obviously pretty small and I'm gonna personally change the style, but it has done a good job of doing exactly that. Okay, so to edit the style of our captions, we're gonna to come to this new layer in our timeline. You can see here, these are all of our captions and I will select this first option. Now, normally in doing that, it will auto jump this top right panel to our text panel. If it doesn't for some reason, you can just come up, hit text. And now I'm gonna click on the basic sub tab. And now here is where we can change the font size. We can actually choose a different font, very classic text editing features. One thing I do wanna point out though, is that if the change you're making to the current auto caption is something that you wanna be reflected across all of the auto captions in the video, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this box, apply to all, is checked on. This way, if I were to grab the font size and increase it, you can see here it's now bigger. If I scroll throughout the video, now all the other captions are also much bigger. And then obviously if you just wanted to edit this individual text layer right here, you would uncheck apply to all. And now if we moved this, it's only gonna move this one layer. All the other layers are still gonna be down there towards the bottom. Now I'm gonna hit Command Z just to go back. And I will recheck apply to all because I do wanna make changes to everything. So with this first layer, we've already increased the font size, which is good. I'm gonna change the font to resolve here. That's one of my favorites. I'm gonna increase the actual width of the caption. That way just a little bit more can be on the screen from side to side. That way they're not so squished and like stacked up on each other. It's still centered here, which is good. And then I also want to add a back background to make the text a little easier to read. So if we come down here, you see we have all these different features we could change. We could add a stroke, which if we come down and actually just zoom in on the player window slightly, it will give you a better idea. Stroke here adds that line around the text, which is very popular. People do that all the time. You could change the color and for example, make it like red if that was part of your brand. I'm actually gonna turn stroke off and use the next effect, which is background. I think in making text easy to read, background does a really good job of doing that. Our brand color is red, just like YouTube. And then I usually like to round the corners of the rectangle as well, just slightly. I think that looks good. And you could also, after that, add a slight drop shadow to the text, which I usually do like doing. I'll just change the blurriness and get it a little bit more subtle. Awesome. Now, if we go here and zoom back out on the player, you can see if we scroll throughout the video, now all of our text looks like that with the same style. Now we have a couple more modifications to the text here. As you can see with layers like this and this one right here, that's just a lot of text in one layer. So I'm actually gonna break these apart. Now to do that is actually really simple. You would just come to wherever you want to break up the text. So make sure you have the layer selected. And just like a video file, we're gonna use the split tool, which effectively cut our caption into two different layers. And now we can come in here, click on it. If we scroll up here in our top right-hand panel, we could type in any changes we want here. But what I typically do instead is just double click on the actual text layer in the player window. And now I can select just the text that I wanna remove. Usually I'll hit Command X to cut it. That looks good. And then we'll go to the next layer. This is the new layer that we split. Select everything and I'll just paste what I cut. It's just something that I'll now take a minute and go throughout the entire video and do. Another thing that I really like to do with my captions is add some animations here and there. So basically rather than having them just pop into frame, we'll animate them a little bit. So whenever you do want to animate a text layer, you just have it selected. We'll come up here to the top right and get the animation sub tab and that's within the text menu. And from here we have tons of really cool animations. Obviously a lot of them they reserve for pro, but I found that some of my personal favorites are all free. One animation that's really subtle, but I use all the time is this zoom in animation. So when I click on that, we'll see how it looks. What's the best? So you can see if I scroll here, it's just zooming in and out. Now I think that's kind of a slower zoom and I can change the duration. If you zoom in, you can actually see there's an arrow here showing where the animation is impacting the text. If we come back to the animation tab, you'll see there's a duration tab. And I'm gonna change this to 0.2 seconds. What's and now that gave us a preview, but it is much faster. What's the best free editing software for beginners in 2024? Now there are tons of animations that I'll let you explore for yourself, but just so you know my top three, those are zoom in, 
glitch, and bounce left. I use those all the time. Now, I actually misspoke earlier. I know I said the auto captions were the last step of our basic edit, but we have one more step and that's to add music. Now, you can obviously pull trending audio from the platforms like TikTok and Instagram. Another option would be to come up to the audio tab and use some of the built-in songs within CapCut. All you do is select one of the tracks and then you would bring that underneath your main A-roll and now we have our music. I'm not a huge fan of the built-in songs though. So instead I get all of my music from epidemicsound.com. Now they are not sponsoring this video by any means. I've just been using them for years and I really love the quality and total diversity of music they have on their platform. Tiger Blood Jewel, which is a really interesting name for an artist, but they are my number one favorite on Epidemic Sound. And for this video, I'm gonna use maybe you try it. Now to get some third-party music actually loaded into CapCut, we'll go back to our main media pool here. I'll click import and then find that song file on our computer. So here's our song. We will drag it down to the audio layer. Now usually I like to start my short form reels at kind of the peak of where the beat drops in the song. And I can see just from the waveform, that's gonna be right around here. So we'll drag that forward. And now I know because this is just a background song, I also wanna lower the volume. We have a couple ways to do that. I can select the song, go up to the basic tab right here. Usually I'll bring the audio down like negative 16 dB. The other option would be to actually come down here and you can see my mouse will change and we have this line right here. I can select that and change the audio. CapCut is an extremely powerful free editing software that works on both your phone and your computer. It has built-in features for auto captions like this. There are built-in temp. All sounds pretty good to me. Once you're done with your music, the only other thing I'd say is take the end and trim it all the way back down to where you actually want your video to end. Because if we left all that there and we exported the video, there would basically be this long portion with no video at the end. And that basically does it for our intro beginner style edit. If you've never edited a video before, I think this is a really good target for you. All you need to do to export that video is come up to this top right corner, hit the export button. Once the dialog loads, you'd basically title your video, select where you want the video to get exported to. I'll just do my desktop. You can copy all of these video settings right here. That's what I found to be highest quality. And finally, you can hit the export button. All right, now it's time to dive into the advanced edit, really using all of the functionality that CapCut has built into it. We're definitely gonna cover a lot here, so feel free to pause the video or rewind in certain sections. And if some of it goes over your head, do not worry. That is the nature of learning things for the first time. It will just take some practice. Before we dive into that though, I want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, which is my company, contentcreator.com. Yes! If you didn't know, at contentcreator.com, we have an online course bundle called 14 Day Filmmaker. It only costs $48 and it contains hundreds of videos that walk you through the step-by-step -step process of learning how to shoot and edit professional videos. Over 100,000 students have enrolled in this program and the number one thing they say is how surprised they are at how quickly they were able to learn these things. When you enroll, you get lifetime access to tons of different things, but primarily you're gonna get three separate programs. The first is 14 day smartphone filmmaker. This covers the entire process of shooting insanely professional content on the camera you always have in your pocket. Perfect for those fun home videos, social media content, and even commercials for your brand. Then after that, you're gonna get 14 day YouTuber, which is another program that covers the start to finish process of launching and growing a successful YouTube channel. And then finally, you get access to 14 day filmmaker pro camera version, which teaches you all about the professional gear, how to use it, all the professional editing software, and so much more. I also personally host a live Q&A call in our students only community where you can hop on, ask me questions and get real time feedback. If you want to learn more and enroll, the link is in the description beneath this video. Other than that, let's dive back into it. Okay, so diving into the advanced edit, the first thing that we're going to spend a lot of time on is the intro. When it comes to creating content online and trying to get views, the intro has a massive impact on it. So I really try to make sure we edit the crap out of it. Now I'm still gonna use some of the auto captions in this video, but in this first section here, I'm actually gonna delete most of them and just manually keyframe some graphics to come in. What's the best free editing software for beginners? So to do that, we're gonna come up to the text tab here. We'll click on add text and then just use this default text. We'll bring it down. Now, same as before, we'll increase the size, move it here, change the font to resolve. And the script reads, what's the best? So we're gonna create three different text layers. What's, and now we'll do the best. Now, a really easy way to duplicate text layers that you've already created or really duplicate any layer in the app is to hold 
Option if you're on a Mac or Alt if you're on a PC, select the layer and then just drag it up. And now you can see we've literally just duplicated that layer. Now with the playhead over both, I can select this second text layer and change it to the, we'll duplicate it again and change this new one to best. Okay, now if you wanna move multiple text layers at a time, you can just drag and select them. Now I wanna move this up here just so they're a little tighter. And we'll also select all three. I'm just gonna decrease them in size a little bit. Now I wanna animate all three of these and an easy way to do that with all of them selected, you can see they're all highlighted. We'll come over to the animation tab and I'm gonna use the bounce left animation that we talked about earlier. Here it is, in software. And now if we play through it, what's the best free? Cool, so that kind of animates in exactly as they're being said. Now I'm gonna explain this before I do it just because it is a complex edit. But what I want to happen is to basically have the entire video kind of zoom in at the beginning, kind of drawing the viewer in. And then we're gonna use the rotoscope or auto cutout feature to basically do a cutout of just my body, have that swipe to the left, and then have a background come in behind me where new animated text graphics can pop up. This is a really popular trend online and I like that you can do it in CapCut. Now, before we dive into that, we'll select the text layers and I wanna come and trim them down so they all end at the same time. Now, earlier in the video, we added this little glare transition. We're gonna keep using that, but for the time being, I'm gonna delete it. Now, to create that zoom in effect on this clip right here that we talked about earlier, it's a really simple process, but it's using a new thing we haven't talked about yet called keyframes. Easy way to think of a keyframe is like anchoring a certain setting at a certain point in time. So with this first clip, we will make sure that we have it selected, come up to the video tab and basic. And now if we want it to zoom in over time, we'll keyframe the scale parameter. So to add a keyframe, we'll hit this little diamond right here. That's essentially anchoring that setting at this point in time. And you can actually see on the clip here, at the very far left side, we have a visual keyframe on the clip. Now, if we move forward in the video, and if we change this setting, it will create a new keyframe. So as I zoom in here on the clip, right when I release it, there we have a new keyframe. And now if I scroll in between these two keyframes, you can see how it's causing us to zoom in and out between those two keyframes. After that second keyframe is done, the zooming will stop. Now I'm actually gonna zoom out just slightly so we can see a little bit more space around the playhead. And I don't wanna just keyframe in the zoom because my head then starts to get cut off. I also wanna keyframe the position. So we'll go back to the beginning, go to where the position is, add a keyframe by hitting this diamond, and then we'll go back to wherever the zoom stops, which is right here. And then we will grab the actual frame and just pull it down, which will create a new keyframe for the position. You can see it's just changed our Y position, which is up and down. And now it's keeping my head in the same spot in the frame. Now here's where it gets really advanced. We're going to use the auto cutout feature in CapCut to just select myself in the frame, allowing us to place a background behind me. Now to do this, we're gonna select this clip here, hold Option or Alt on the keyboard, and drag up one layer. So you can see now, we have two layers of the same exact clip. This top layer is what we're gonna do the auto cutout of. So with that clip selected, we will come to video, the cutout sub tab, We'll scroll down and just hit auto cutout. It's gonna take a second to process and then we're done. Now, it doesn't look like anything has happened, but that's because we still have this clip underneath it. If I turn off this layer of the video, look at that. Now we can't see the bottom layer and our top layer has just me cut out from it. Anything that looks black right now is essentially transparent. So now if we go back to our media pool, we have a new background, a motion background that I've imported you can find these online for free. Personally, I downloaded this one from contentcreatortemplates.com. Now, if I drag this motion background, bring it down to our timeline and make sure that we place it in between these two layers. Sometimes it's hard, but once you see the line pop up there, that way you know it's gonna add a new layer. We'll place that there, now drag it up to the beginning. Now, I know we're getting pretty condensed here in our screen, there isn't a ton of space, but you can see because this background is placed underneath the cutout layer, it's showing up behind the cutout. And now if I grab this and rotate it 90 degrees, 
and then increase the scale, we've now got a background showing behind the main subject. Now you'll notice because I have like a desk here normally in the frame, it kind of makes the cutout look a little awkward. That's fine, we'll clean that up in a second, but we don't want the background to come in at the very beginning. We want it to come in right as the next kind of words are being said after what's the best. And that is free video editing software. So if we play through to find that part, what's the best right there? What's the best free here? We can trim our clip to start right around here. And now we're going to keyframe the opacity. Now the opacity is basically like making a clip see-through or not. And if you come back, and it's really easy to do, we'll select this clip, make sure we're in the basic sub tab for video, scroll down and we can see opacity here. Now I can create a keyframe where I want the transition to basically be done go back to the beginning here and then bring the opacity all the way down. This is gonna create another keyframe, which you can see down there. And now we have a transition where the background essentially comes into view. I do wanna lengthen that transition out a little bit, so we'll drag this second keyframe out. Now I can see it takes a little longer for it to come in. And that looks really good. Now obviously we have all this black right here, and that's just because we disabled this bottom track. If we come down here and hit the show track button, now it's gonna be back on and I'll play through how this looks. What's the best free and Pretty cool, right? So we have the background coming into view, which is a good starting point. Now we essentially want to make the what's the best text fade into nothing. And then we wanna swipe my subject off to the left. Again, this is gonna involve a lot of keyframes, which something that you're going to want to familiarize yourself with as a video editor. So first let's start with the text. If we want this all to fade out, again, that's gonna be the opacity, but rather than have the opacity fade out on each individual clip one at a time, we can actually select all of these and combine them into what CapCut calls a compound clip. So if we, again, we make sure all of these are selected, we can right click on them and then hit create compound clip. That basically just turned all three of these now into their own layer, where now we can come to wherever we want this to fade out. With the clip selected, we'll go down to opacity, create a keyframe, we'll go a couple frames forward by just using the arrow keys on our keyboard, and then we'll bring the opacity down to zero. So now you can see that text essentially fades out. What's the best free? I'm just gonna reposition these slightly so the text fades out earlier. What's the best free? Cool. Now we want my frame to slide off of the screen. So right here, we'll come down to this cutout frame right here. We'll go to video, the basic sub tab, and then for position, we'll create a keyframe right here, locking that position in time. We'll go forward a few frames, and then all we need to do to slide it off screen is grab it, move it over to the left, at which point it will create a new keyframe. And you can see now that animation brings me off screen. Okay, I know we have a lot going on here, but we're almost done with the intro. As this frame gets swiped off screen, I want the text free editing software to come onto the frame. So we'll come up to the text tab, bring our default text on to the timeline, scale it up, free, duplicate it by holding Option or Alt, editing one more time, software. So I know they're all jumbled up, that's just because I typed them on top of each other but now we can drag software down, editing down, and then free up. Now I do wanna change the way that these look, so we'll select them all, go over to the text and then basic tab, change the font to resolve, scroll down and remove the stroke, and actually also wanna change the color to black. So that all looks good, we just need to time it up with the script. What's the best free editing software for? The only other thing I'll do here, cause I do wanna add one more layer of animation, we'll select all of these, go to animation, and then we will use the glitch animation. Here it is, so we'll select that. And now you can see how that animation looks. Best free editing software for beginners. I think that's a little long, so we'll come back here to the duration and change that to 0.3 instead. Editing. Free editing software for beginners. Cool. Now, if you remember back to the previous edit, this is where we have some additional B-roll come in. We can't see that B-roll right now because this crumpled paper background is way too long, and we also have this text. So we'll select the crumpled paper here, Hit Command B to create a split point, delete the leftover, and then the same thing with the text. We need to cut that here, so we'll select all of them, hit Command B, and then hit Delete. So now we can play through that. What's the best free editing software for beginners? In okay, so we've got that retimed, and remember we had a transition here before, it was the glare transition. The reason we took that off is because with all these layers going on, the transition just wouldn't have made sense. A transition likes to go from one layer to another. 
And so we're gonna revisit something we talked about earlier and create a compound clip out of this entire intro. So if we come down here and literally select every single layer, normally if we right click, we'd have the option to make a compound clip, but we can't because if we go back, if you remember this layer right here, the what's the best has already been turned into a compound clip. You can't create a compound clip out of an existing compound clip. So to solve this, we can literally just grab that layer and bring it down because it already ends here. Remember, it fades out. So now we can come back, select all these layers, all of them, right click, create compound clip. What's the best free editing software? For so now literally we just condensed all those layers into this compound clip. If we ever wanted to, we could right click it and hit undo compound clip. And now we've gone back to everything that we had before. But the reason I like this is now we have two clips right up against each other. Now we can use our transition. So if I come up here to our transition tab, we've got glare already selected. We can bring it down and now play through it. What's the best free editing software for beginners? Pretty cool. I know that was a lot of work. The intro is usually the most advanced segment of an entire video, but it's out of the way now and we covered a ton there. Now to save some time throughout the rest of this edit, if we're doing something that I've already kind of explained in detail, I won't re-explain it in detail. I'll just kind of do it and you can watch the process. So here we just added two more text layers and gave them a glitch animation. Software for beginners in 2024. For the past now moving on, another thing that I like to do in basically all of my edits is keyframe those subtle zoom ins on clips to add emphasis and kind of increase the intensity. So for this clip right here, rather than just have it sit static, all I'm gonna do is come to the beginning, make sure we've got it selected, keyframe the scale and the position, bring the playhead to the end of the clip or one frame before it, we'll zoom out slightly, and then we'll just increase the scale and bring the position down slightly. Then we'll grab this keyframe down here on the timeline and just move it to the very end of the video. This way, when we play through it, there will be a slight zoom. For the past 10 years, see how it's zooming in now? All right, so here we're gonna use a paper fold transition to have text come in for Premiere Pro. So we'll come up to the effects tab, make sure we have video effects selected and just type in paper. So craft paper off is what we're gonna use here. We'll drag it down onto this clip and I'll show you what it looks like. Here's my go-to editing program has been Premiere Pro. Pretty cool. So it kind of comes in, but we're gonna actually grab the beginning of the effect here and move it back so we have more time before it comes into view. My go to editing program has been right here. So right as I say Premiere Pro, it closes. So we're just gonna add some animated text here and to make life even easier, I'm not gonna start it and create the text from scratch. I'm just gonna grab what we've already done, hold option, duplicate it and bring it over here. Change this to Premiere. Change this to pro. Program has been awesome. I've also got this logo here in my media pool for Premiere Pro, so we'll drag that over, scale it down. That looks pretty good. Now I actually wanna create like a little transition animation of this clip coming into frame. So with it selected, we will go to animation. And now one of my favorite animations here is just slide up. So when I click on that, and Premiere, it's gonna make that little graphic just slide up from the bottom, which I think looks great has been Premiere Pro. I love this software, but it's not beginner friendly. And the monthly subscription. All right, so here we have a new segment in the video where we're gonna do a new effect. In the script I say, it's 2024 and the days of having to pay hundreds of dollars for an expensive editing program are over. Here we're gonna use another animated motion background. I use these all the time. This is a cool one where it's just like little animated dots. Again, you can get these for free online. This is another one I downloaded from contentcreatortemplates.com. We'll select this bring it down on the timeline. We will rotate it, scale it up. And now we actually already had the auto captions made for this section from earlier in the video. So I will drag these, select them all, and then drag them up. It's 2020. So now we'll just reposition these graphics so that they pop up as they should. Go to the basic tab, make sure we don't have apply to all checked. Turn this guy up, change the background color to black. Now I want all the text to actually stay on frame and add one layer at a time. So I'm gonna bring this up to a new layer, and then we can extend this out. 2024, in the days of having to pay. So when I say hundreds of dollars, I'm just gonna have little dollar sign graphics come up on the screen. We have some little dollar clip art here that I got online. We'll bring this down, size it up, and move it here. I'm actually gonna have three of them. So we'll hold option, duplicate, 
Option duplicate again, so that looks good. And now just like the Premiere Pro icon earlier that we had kind of animate onto the frame, we'll select these PNGs one at a time. Animation, slide up, bring the pay. slide up, bring the pay. slide up, bring the pay. For in the days of having to pay 100, looks good. And now we'll offset them just slightly so they come up one at a time. For in the days of having to pay hundreds of dollars for quality editing program. So another little section done here, we just need to trim the backs. To do that, I can actually just select all of them and then hit Command B to split all of it. And then we'll just hit delete. And we also need to delete this background here. And now we're good to go. It's 2024 and the days of having to pay hundreds of dollars for quality editing programs are over. CapCut is, we've got our little B-roll section here that we already created with some awesome transitions. So at this part in the video, the script reads, there are built-in templates and transitions that look great. We've already showed off a lot of the transitions. So here I wanna emphasize the templates. So to do that, we'll come up to the text tab right here. And I actually know I wanna use a little subscribe template. So we'll type that in. Yeah, this one's cool. There are built-in templates and that looks good. We'll size it up. Got another one here. I just searched name. I like the way this looks. So we'll bring that up. Anthony G. So it looks pretty cool. We'll offset them slightly. Yes. There are built-in templates and transitions. That looks good. We'll add one more for like. That looks cool. Now this is definitely kind of going overboard, but I want this one to be up here in the top corner and I want it slightly behind my head. So to do that, we're gonna go back to a feature we've already used, which is the auto cutout. I'm gonna take this bottom A-roll layer, hold option, duplicate it. Then with that selected, we'll go to cutout, auto cutout. So now we have our cutout layer and then our regular layer. All we need to do is take this graphic and drag it down to be between those two layers. And now, would you look at that? It is behind my head, which looks super cool. And templates and transitions that look really professional. Okay, so this next section I went ahead and did already, but I'll explain it. You can do auto cutouts and green screen effects and so much more. You should likely recognize this already. We basically just have the auto cutout. So you can see we have our main A roll. Then we have the background layer on top of that, which is this black kinetic dots background. We've got the text for auto cutouts which is underneath the layer of the actual cutout. That's why you can see the text is behind the cutout. Those have the basic glitch animations on them, which we've been using. And then those just cut and it says so much more. And then the video basically ends exactly how the previous video did with just the auto captions. Now, even though the video aspect is done, we still have one crucial step, which is to add sound design to our video. Sound design is definitely one of those things most beginners will forget, but it adds a huge level of professionalism to the content. Now with edits like this, I try to look for any drastic movements or actions in the video that we can associate with a sound. A lot of times this is having a whip or whoosh noise for graphics flying in and off screen, maybe pop sound effects for graphics as they pop on screen. If I mention dollars or lots of money, I'd use a cash register sound effect. The sky is really the limit with sound design, but let's do a quick pass right now. So just like any footage, graphic, or song, we are just going to import the sound effects directly into CapCut. I have a little folder here for my essential SFX, and these are all things that I've downloaded from contentcreatortemplates.com. They also have tons of great sound effects, but you can find these for free on YouTube or other sites. You just have to spend a little time looking. I'll import this entire folder. We'll click on it in the media pool, and now we'll start finding areas to add it. So right here at the very beginning, when my cutout just kind of like pops in and out of the frame, we can use a whoosh sound effect like this one right here. We'll just zoom in on the timeline, find right where that happens, and we'll drag the whoosh down, and position it so it times up nicely. What's the best free editing? Cool, that sounds pretty good. And now one way that I typically will sound design my videos, because I'll have a lot of whooshes, I will select that, hit Command C to copy it, and then I'll just go throughout the video and hit Command P and paste it every time it becomes relevant. So like right here on the zoom transition, that's another time. So I'll just hit Command V, retime it. For the past 10, that looks pretty good. So these graphics right here are like popping into the frame. So we'll grab this pop sound effect right here, drag it down, and then we'll just need to time it up to make sure that it pops right in at the correct time. You know, it's 2020. So that looks pretty good. It is a little loud though, so we've got that selected and I'll just bring the volume down. Right here, we're actually talking about money, so I'll grab the cash register sound effect, put that right down here, and I know that's already pretty loud, so we'll lower it. Days of having to pay hundreds of dollars for quality editing program. 
that looks good. And I just continue that process throughout the entire video, finding sounds to associate with actions. And that officially does it for the super advanced edit where we really dove into all of the advanced features that CapCut has at its disposal. The last thing that you would do is just hit that export button and copy the same process that we used for the previous one. I know I threw a ton at you in today's video, but hopefully there was something for all skill levels, the beginners, all the way up to the super advanced editors. If you found this content valuable, definitely check out the 14 day filmmaker bundle from contentcreator.com. I think you'll absolutely love that program. Other than that, hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.